Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah I'm your host Mohsin Shah and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'a Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi How are you? Alhamdulillah MashaAllah Sheikhna, the last couple of episodes, you know, our conversation has you know, evolved around um, khums and you know, paying khums and the different categories and how to pay khums, when to pay khums um, the question I have in regarding of paying khums is that do we actually have to give a fifth of, uh, of the item itself or the value of the item? For example, maybe I have extra rice, surplus rice and flour. Should I give 20% of the actual rice and flour away as khums? Or should I give its value as money and give that as khums? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد In the situation, yes, you have two options, as you've mentioned. Um, you either can pay um, from the item itself. So if it's uh, rice or flour, you take uh, the, the weight of that amount in which required to be paid as a khums from that flour or rice and you give it to uh, the marja or the, the, the rep. Um, however, you can also pay the value of that uh, rice or flour or whatever else it is and you pay cash or in other words, you pay it um, to uh, the right person. So you have two options, it's whatever you, it is more convenient to the individual. And Sheikh, when it comes to paying khums, I mean, do I have to pay it in one go or can I give like monthly installments? You're allowed to pay them monthly, but um, it would be a lot easier if the one um, sticks to the date of the khums every year and then takes out um, the one fifth or the 20% of the annual surplus left over uh, from his wealth. Um, because monthly would make it a bit difficult that you try to calculate your hummus every month, what is left, for example, and so forth. And, uh, and then you pay them every month. It's just to make things a lot easier if it's done uh, annually. Um, to break down your hummus payments, if they are annually and you can't pay them, another way is to pay in installments, but it seems to be that it's better to ask the marja ijaza because now you're delaying the payment of the hummus, yes. the annual hummus. Yes. Uh, when it's reached the date, mm -hmm. or the due date, in which you have to pay the annual hummus, you must pay it straight away, and you pay the whole amount. But sometimes you have an issues, you know, you know let's say, uh, financial issues, other payments you have, um, and the hummus is not to do with cash, with money, mm -hmm. it's to do with the assets and the belongings. Yes. So to be able to pay them, you need money from somewhere else to, mm -hmm. to recover and, and pay yes. the khumus of these items yes. which you haven't, let's say, used, for example. In this case, you take the ijazah from the marja and then uh, you break down the khumus monthly but that requires ijazah, as I mentioned, uh, permission. Ahsant. Sheikhna, what happens or what is one to do when they are preparing to pay the khumus, they've calculated the khumus, they've got the money collected and ready, now they're on their way to um, deliver the khums money to who they're supposed to give it to and they get robbed. God forbid this happens to anybody. But, you know, your khums money gets stolen. Is that person still liable to pay the khums money or not? As long as you have paid your khums and the khums reached the marja or his representative, then that's it. Uh, there's no issue with, uh, with regard to worrying about uh, if it's reached or not reached. You've given it to that right person, that's fine, that, that's it. You've done your uh, obligation and duty. However, um, as the Sayyid mentions that, uh, you will not have fulfilled your obligation if this money was not reached okay. to the rep or the marja himself. You must make sure that when it comes out of your pocket, this money or uh, the, the item of the hummus, 
you must make sure that you give it and you hand it over to the representative or to the marja himself, or to the person you trust, somebody who was appointed by the marja to take out the khums and zakat and so forth. So without being able to uh, deliver this amount to the marja, now if it's lost or stolen, then uh, the individual will have the obligation of paying the khums again. I mean, there's no way you can uh, get away with it. This is Haqqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Haqq al-Imam alayhi salam. So you have to make sure that this is paid uh, to the marja or his representative, the one we trust, and uh, to become uh, and make your wealth uh, pure and be able to continue your trade and buying and selling and your expenditures for the next coming year. So uh, it is an issue, to be honest. Um, you must be able to achieve and uh, make sure that you have given the amount and it reached that uh, individual, the one you trust, in which they will be in charge in uh, taking your hummus. I said, I mean, God forbid it happens to anybody, but I, I know in, in back home in, in my home country, they say if someone steals your money, or pickpocket or something, it's uh, don't worry about it, it's sadaqa. They used to say, it's sadaqa, don't worry about it. Um, Sheikhna, let's say there's an individual who um, you know, has a shop and, and rents a shop, hasn't paid khums before, doesn't pay khums, but now he decides that, you know, I want to start paying khums. Where does one actually begin to calculate? Where, where should he start from calculating um, how to pay his khums? Um, for such individuals, they have to do two things. Number one, they have to first, if they haven't got a set date for the hummus payment. So they set a date during the year, they choose a date and a month, uh, and they set that date, and they go and calculate all their wealth, you know, their business, their dwellings, whatever they own, and they try to figure out how much they have. The second point in the stage, they go to the marja or his representative, the trustee one, in which they will uh, come to a settlement and an agreement with the marja or his rep uh, with regard to the payment of the khumas, how much they have to pay. They have to pay the whole amount or part of it, in which is known as the musalaha. So they come up with them to a settlement in which how much they have to uh, pay, and that will be, inshallah, uh, khair and barakah and a blessing for the individual who pays the khumus. Allah will uh, uh, sustain this person more and more. And as I've mentioned in the previous, I think in the first episode about that the khumus brings sustenance more and more, uh, purity to the one's soul and purify him from his sins. So it is all khair and barakah and blessing and mercy and forgiveness for the one who tries his best to pay the khumas. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, if an individual has never paid khums in his life and this person now passes away, I mean, with the inheritance, how is that to be distributed? That, you know, is it, are we supposed to take the khums out before we start giving, distributing the inheritance? Or do, you know, it, it doesn't matter because it's inheritance, there's no khums on inheritance, there's nothing to pay. With regard to inheritance, um, if the one has never paid any khumus in his lifetime and he dies, passes away, um, the first thing they have to do is to take out the khumus from the total sum of the inheritance. When that khumus is taken out and the money and the wealth becomes pure, now they, then they can actually uh, spread the cost or the, um, uh, the inheritance to those who are eligible to receive the inheritance. Um, otherwise, there will be mushkila with regard to the uh, problem with regard but to the khums. With, with this person, he's never paid khums in his life. So do we calculate khums you know, for his whole life or is just the 20% of what's left over? No, whatever he spent, he spent. It's gone. Now mm. what he has is his, let's say, few buildings, few cars. These are the leftovers. Uh, we calculate them how much they worth, and then we pay the khumus out of these uh, dwellings and, and, and um, assets and 
properties, and then we can give it to the inheritors, whoever they are, um, and spread between them. So that's the most important thing, is to purify the money, the wealth Mashallah. first. So it's really with what's left over, yes. not what was previously owed. No. Uh, because it's always difficult to calculate. And I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> want, want, want what's uh, due to them. And again, of course, this is, could be referred back to the marja as well yes. uh, for, for more uh, details because um, there are, might be some issues in which the one uh, hasn't really uh, looked into. So you might have a musalah as a settlement, for example, mm -hmm. and so forth. So best is to go back to the marja and to raise the issue there. Ahsant. Sheikhna, we live in 2019 now and you know migration and, and Muslims are living you know, further and further away from you know, what we call the heart and the hub of where the religion started from. And sometimes it can be difficult uh, to find a Husseinia or find an Islamic center. So for those people who live in really remote areas or areas where there's not really a big Muslim community and there's no access to a marja or, or, or to any form of, you know, um, Paying your homes money. What does one person do then? If you know he's calculated his homes, he's ready to pay, but it's difficult for him because there's no rep like legal representatives of his marja there. There's no access to you know someone. Um, I mean, can, does he go online? Does he pay online? Does he you know send the money by mail? Um, what about can he give the money to charities? Maybe he's, there's family members that you know require money. Maybe he could give it to them. How, how does it work for such a person? Well, if we look through the narrations of the time of Ahlul Bayt السلام, for example, we see that they had such, such scenarios and situations where the Imam is, for example, in Medina and the one who wants to pay the hummus is in Khurasan, in Afghanistan, for example, in other remote areas of, uh, from the Islamic State and the, the cities and, and so forth. Um, in this case, uh, they used to, for example, appoint somebody who goes, let's say, every six months or every year to the Imam alayhi salam. And he used to take the, uh, the khums in bags, in coins, for example, in that time, and travel all the way, could be taken a few months, to reach the Imam alayhi salam and pay him the khums. However, now with the technology and the latest developments uh, in terms of money tra transfer and so forth, it's now a lot easier uh, to uh, transfer money to uh, one point to another point in the world. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And uh, they can easily contact the rep in, let's say, in America or Europe, wherever they are, or in Asia, for example, and try to come up with a settlement in terms of how to pay and how much to pay, for example. And um, Otherwise, if they can have access to the marja himself in Najaf or Qum, for example, that's even fine. They can actually um, send somebody or a parcel and so forth. They can try to find a way in, in which they can send this amount of money and transfer it to the right uh, destination and to the right hands. Of course, uh, you have no right to spend this money, which is the khums. Mm -hmm in any other causes, unless there's a permission from the marja. Okay. So you, mu you must gain uh, and attain the permission from the marja to be able to pay uh, this amount to other causes. Without permission, you cannot uh, use this money and utilize it. You must take permission. So uh, if that individual and that person, the mu'min, uh, wants to spend it on his poor relatives or let's say his center or mosque, for example, they must seek permission from the marja himself to be able to uh, spend it on their own causes. Sheikhna, what happens in the cases of like uh, reverts? So people who have come to Islam, um, they must have like a backlog of um, homes that they haven't paid for. So do these people, do they have to calculate their homes from, you know, the age of 14, 15? Or is it as soon as they've entered Islam? they can choose you know, a date and the first year they will start paying their homes from that year. Exactly what you've said. Um, they start fresh. Okay, so they're exempted from the exa previous. Exactly, they start fresh. And of course, they have to check now, now they, that they are Muslim, 
they have forced belongings, uh, assets, uh, possibly um, other belongings they have, they own them. They come with the marja as a set in settlement that I have these things, I want to start hummus. So they set a date in the year, you know, the Islamic calendar year, let's say in month Ramadan or Muharram or Rajab, for example. So they have a set date for the hummus. And of course, they come to a settlement with the marja, with the scholar or his rep, that how much do I have to pay now? Now I'm, I'm a Muslim, I want to start paying hummus, I've got these things. So uh, the best thing is to contact the, uh, the rep or the marja himself and to come up with a settlement with regard to uh, their own belongings at the, at the moment. And of course they have the date, so they can start paying hummus on that date. MashaAllah, how <laughs> easy and how simple it is now for us to, to calculate and to pay, MashaAllah. Sheikh, my final question is in regards to prize money. And sometimes, you know, we get involved in charitable raffles. Um, sometimes it's like voluntary redundancy. Companies pay out money. So when you receive uh, a large sum of money, um, this is from a prize draw, uh, for, like we have from uh, um, bonds and, and banks and stuff like that. Do we have to pay homes on that? And if we have to pay homes, do we pay it straight away or do we have to wait one year and whatever's left over, 20% of the remainder? If that price draw was based on the profits uh, from the bank, to do with profits, and there are investments, for example, in this case, he has to pay them immediately. But if the price was just a price, you know, um, nothing to do with the profits, and uh, the individual had the bank account with them, for example, for many years, and now he's in a price draw, and he won the price. In this case, that individual can wait till the due date of the hummus. And if he hasn't used this, his price, for example, he does pay the hummus for it. Otherwise, there's no need for paying the hummus. MashaAllah. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this episode. Inshallah, we'll have a brand new discussion on the next episode of Ahkam SOS. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.